Hello again fellow preppers. Today we are going to be learning a bit about ironweed. And I hope whenever I pop up on this video, you excuse my appearance. I had to hike a good bit, had the camera set up, it fell over a few times. There's no problem finding ironweed in Ohio, especially after the wet spring we had, which attracts it. But I couldn't find it in level spot. That I had one set up the tripod and it moved. I went to fix it and I fell in a hole. And then I moved and found another spot with more beautiful ironweed. And I heard something rattling about three feet away from where I was. And I don't mind snakes, but when they rattle, I don't want any part of them. So, hopefully the wind we're getting today is not going to knock over the camera. This is ironweed. Native Americans, especially the Cherokee Nation, use it for all types of medicinal purposes. It grows very tall, depending on the, the type, the species. This is tall ironweed. There are about 500 species of ironweed. This one, I'm five foot and I got my cowboy boots on, so I'm probably, I don't know, maybe I'm five one. I say this is about five four. This one here in the back, clearly way over my head. Um, the horses don't like to eat it, but if they do, there's not a problem. That's why I don't mind it in our pasture because it does have healing properties. A lot of farmers and homesteaders think it's a nuisance weed and are very disturbed with how much um, of it has grown in the fields this year after our wet spring. Um, if you're having a meat animal and you need much more protein and uh, uh, to bulk up over the winter, uh, having this in your hay field would be more of a bother, but it's not gonna hurt any common farm animals that I can think of. Now, the plants don't tend to bloom all at once. They go in stages, and this is a great example of that. We have some blooms that are just fresh and some Native Americans and early pioneers used to pick off these beautiful purple flowers, put them in their mouth, and use it like a sweet chew. There's no as a su substitute for tobacco. Um, it has a sweet to bittersweet taste depending on the time of year and the species of ironweed you're dealing with. And then we also have some that are um, closed up, dried up flower heads here. These ones, and I'll bring them close to the camera in just a minute, are getting ready to go to seed. And the reason ironweed spreads so quickly, one, is because of the weather that it will grow so easily. And we've had flooding for about two and a half years straight here in my part of Appalachia. But um, the seeds are dispersed very easily in the wind. And about this time of year, it's middle of August. And between now and October, we will be having all kinds of ironweed bloom up, finish off its season and go to seed. You can plant it in the fall if you want to cultivate it. It doesn't grow wild where you live. So it blows, it, it just blows so easy, the thin little seeds, almost like the dandelions that grow in your yard and you pick them up as a child and you'd poof on them a little bit and they would go everywhere. Same thing with ironweed. So it disperses and grows. It's very hardy. It could take over a field. These are what the flowers look like. Make sure I'm not holding them too close. They're beautiful little purple flowers. You can use them for dyeing too. If you're raising sheep and you want to dye the wool naturally and sell that as a money maker on your survival homestead or just in your own backyard, you can uh, go ahead and make the dye and sell it as a liquid or a powder version. And uh, these can be chewed on. Like I said, there's not really a medicinal value in the flowers themselves. They are pretty. And here are the leaves of the ironweed plant. They are lance shaped or knife shaped. They have a slightly serrated edge. Makes them a little bit easy to identify. They're very coarse when you feel them. The top is a little smooth and thick and the bottom is coarse. They grow between three to 10 inches long depending on um, the variety of the ironweed plant. And these are flower deadheads that are getting ready to go to seed but aren't quite there yet. If you leave these on a plant a little bit longer they will go to seed. Some people say if you take them off, you go ahead and let them dry out. You can use them as seed. But they're still a little wet, even though they look hard. They have a little bit of moisture to them. So it's best just to leave them on, this, on the plant until they get ready to go to flower, or I'm sorry, go to seed completely. And here are what, this is all from the same plant, which is quite unique. You can have a plant in so many different stages. These are what the seeds look like when they are ready to be harvested and stored. And if you pull off the top here, it's like all white and fuzzy. I need an extra hand. You can peel back the hard part. And again, 
It does kind of resemble what a dandelion would look like, and I'm hoping you can see that. And it's a little white part inside. And as these continue to dry out, every one of these little things will fly out and can spark a new ironweed plant. So you can see how they could easily take over a pasture. There's a couple on my finger, might make it easier to see. And so each one of those you could preserve and try to do a plant, or you could just spread them out a little bit. If you want to cultivate your own to have, a, have it as part of your survival apothecary, spread them out a little bit and just sow them. Just give them a toss out in some moisture. You don't even need to bury them. But on each plant, you could probably have hundreds of these seeds and have more come from it. That's why this year we have ironweed in places we've never had it before. It prefers a moist soil and it's not moist where I am right now, not normally. It's really dry and hard here. Um, but this year we've had so much rain. So the weather will change, not with just the ironweed, but anything you have growing wild on your property. You know, you have years where your fruit trees don't produce as much or you have berries in great abundance. So the weather has a lot to do with what's growing and where. We probably have on a low estimate 500 ironweed plants on our property, which is great. I'm going to start digging some up now. I harvested the heads off of a lot of them to make a natural dye. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and dry some out just for decorative purposes to make homemade gifts from our survival homestead for Christmas and use that as part of a homeschooling experience and foraging training for our grandchildren. But one of the reasons this cult has had the nickname ironweed is because it's so tough. I had to bend that completely over and jerk to get it to have the least little crack in it. And it's still not all the way taken off. We had a horrible storm last night. Some of them were kind of poofed over. But they've not died. Now this one, it won't grow well. And you know, it, the seeds on it and the flower heads are not going to grow well after snapping it like that. But even though I've snapped it and there's about pinkies width. Of destruction on this plant it will not kill it it won't kill it today tomorrow and a week or two when it dries out it will go ahead and continue and finish its growing cycle they are exceptionally hardy and uh, you can plant them in your garden they can take over if you don't make sure that you uh, lob off any plants that are coming up that you don't want they're beautiful they attract um, butterflies they also attract bees like crazy so they'd be great to draw bees to your survival garden and give you a nice little berry if you plant them and they'll make a nice thick row a tall row to give you some natural privacy if you want that but the root is the most medicinal part and i'm going to dig one up several of them up actually and you take the root and you powder it and you can use it as a tea as a tincture and ironweed is great for treating hemorrhages uh, pain after giving birth monthly menstrual cramps um, stomach aches and will it's a fever reducer those are some of the top things it's been used for over the years so you can plant it on your homestead or go ahead and let it grow or grow in a certain area you may or may not want it in your hay field or your pasture you don't want anything that's going to soak up all the nutrients and kill what you're trying to to grow for your animals to graze upon or browse upon if they're sheep or goats but uh, the goats will eat it and it's not going to hurt anybody that eats it and there's no reason to flip out about like lots of folks do unless you're running out of space and have a lot of cattle you gotta put weight on over the winter. So ironweed is pretty. It's sometimes called the superhero of uh, weeds or wild plants because it does have so many uses and it is so hardy. It grows in the east, mid east, all the way down to the south, this variety. And it's the most prominent variety in the United States. It's the easiest spot to identify. I don't know any uh, toxic lookalikes. And this is something if you happen to see growing on your property, you might want to investigate more about adding it to your uh, survival medicine plan.